The EU's foreign affairs chief made a surprise visit to the port city of Odessa in Ukraine on Saturday. Josep Borrell told Ukrainians that the EU would continue to support them with arms and money. And he visited the city's cathedral, which Russia bombed in July. My presence here in Odessa is to show how we are supporting Ukraine from our military support, our economic support, our political and diplomatic activity to look for a peace, but a just peace that preserves the territorial integrity and independence of Ukraine. Also on Saturday, Vladimir Putin spoke on the anniversary of Russia's partial and illegal annexation of four Ukrainian regions. Свободный и однозначный выбор наших братьев и сестер народ России поддержал всем сердцем, защищая наших соотечественников на Донбассе и в Новороссии, мы защищаем саму Россию. Meanwhile, Russians gathered in Red Square for a concert to celebrate the anniversary. Ukraine has hosted an international defense industry conference as part of a government effort to ramp up weapons production within the country. Around 250 defense companies from more than 30 countries gathered in Kyiv as President Zelensky looks to repel Russia's invasion and reduce dependence on foreign arms deliveries. Сучасний та потужний арсенал, який не залишить шансів жодному агресору. Zelensky announced the creation of the Defense Industries Alliance and added that 13 defense companies have already signed up. He plans to establish a special fund, which will be paid into through dividends from state defense resources and profits from the sale of confiscated Russian assets. Almost all of Nagorno-Karabakh's ethnic Armenians have now fled to Armenia, the government there says, many to the city of Goris here on the border. The exodus came after Azerbaijan attacked the region on September the 19th and ordered the Armenian fighters there to disarm. Armenians now asked the EU to send medical supplies and help them put up temporary shelters for the refugees. Its Prime Minister, Nikol Pashinyan, has described it as ethnic cleansing but Azerbaijan insists it's nothing to do with forced relocation and that it would have guaranteed their security if they'd remained. Meanwhile, Azerbaijan has been knocking down abandoned military outposts in Nagorno-Karabakh and seizing weapons there. And in Yerevan, the Armenian capital, protesters remain angry that the government was unable to prevent the collapse of the Armenian government in the breakaway region. Pope Francis has created 21 new cardinals from across the world, saying diversity was indispensable to the future of the Catholic Church. With the sun shining over the Vatican City's St. Peter's Square, the 86-year-old Pope said their variety would serve the Church like musicians in an orchestra. These clergymen will help him enact his reforms, govern and one day elect his successor. Saturday's consistory is the ninth since Francis was named head of the world's 1.3 billion Catholics in 2013. Back in the spring, Jan Smigmator's swing band played at New York's famous Carnegie Hall. Now the Czech band are playing deep underground in a former Soviet nuclear warhead depot called Havel 51, which has been converted into the Atom Museum. Akustika tady v Atom muzeu je naprosto vynikající, nám se tady hraje skvěle a moc se mi líbí myšlenka po celém světě ze skladů atomové munice udělat jazz club. It's hidden deep inside a forest where during the Cold War no Czechoslovak citizen was allowed to enter. Tohle muzeum bylo založeno proto, abychom varovali budoucí generace před tím, co si prožili naši dědové, naši otcové a aby se to již nikdy neopakovalo. The concerts are trying to highlight the danger of nuclear weapons, particularly as there's another major war being fought in Europe. The dnešní vzkaz z bývalého úřiště daných hlavic zní jasně. Make art not war. Jiří Skáncel, Euronews, Brdské lesy.